There are three primary analytical models used in sociology, functionalism, conflict theory, and symbolic interaction. It is important that you understand them since they are basic to sociology and will feature in some of the essays you write and on the exams. The oldest of the three is functionalism, which has its roots in the work of Emile Durkheim. Durkheim was interested by the question of what allowed societies to cohere for such long periods of time, and also by what caused societies to deteriorate or even fail. To answer those questions, he found it helpful to view society as analogous to a human body. The body is made up of organs or structures, each of which has a function. As long as each organ does its job, then the body should be healthy. Society, in his mind, was similar. Societies have structures or organs, each of which has a necessary function. Fulfilling that purpose is why they exist. For example, all societies have a family structure, a dominant religion, an economic system for exchanging goods and services, a government of some kind, an organization to educate its people, and an institution to deal with their health needs. Each of these social structures or organs has a function, and the health society depends on how well they do their jobs. Importantly in functionalism, all of these societal organs or institutions are interconnected. As in a body, if one structure begins to malfunction, it causes all the other structures to adjust and increases stress in the system. For this reason, for functionalists, the status quo is preferred. Functionalists tend to be conservative. Change in one place causes change to occur everywhere, and change is stressful. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. For example, if the economic system malfunctions, such as in 2008, it causes great stress to families as people lose jobs, and to the government as tax revenue declines, and to the health care system as fewer people pay their bills. It is also true in functionalism that function is more important than fairness. In fact, unfairness is often seen as functional. Poverty and unemployment, for example, are believed to be functional. We need people always looking for work. That's how employers find a supply of eager workers. We need people to do the crappy jobs for low pay. Otherwise, Big Macs would cost $20. Similarly, people with important jobs deserve more money, because that's how we get people to do those jobs. It may seem unfair, but it works. It's functional. If you don't like it, get an important job that pays more. Poverty should be uncomfortable. If poverty becomes comfortable, it promotes dysfunction. It is true that poverty can reach such levels that it becomes dysfunctional. That's how revolutions occur. But short of that, whatever success you achieve is up to you. Go out there, get an education, work hard, make lots of money, start a family, purchase a house, two cars, three TVs, four computers, an enormous refrigerator, and go into debt, because it keeps our society functioning. The American dream is functional, even if it remains a dream for many people. Conflict theory is very different, and has its roots in the work of Karl Marx. Conflict theory, like the name suggests, says that conflict is inherent and ongoing in society because of inequality between people. To put it in simple terms, there is a small group of wealthy people and a large group of not wealthy people, the haves and the have-nots. The haves are continually trying to hang on to what they have and get more, and the have-nots are trying to get more and take it from those who have it. There is a constant struggle for power and wealth. In that struggle, the wealthy have a large advantage, since they already have power 
and access to power means you can get what you want. The rich and powerful will have the laws and rules written in a way that benefits them. Special laws are written, for example, which give the very wealthy tax breaks, so they l pay lower rates or maybe no taxes at all. This helps them to gain more wealth and power and makes it harder for those without. Order is maintained by the rich and powerful, asserting dominance over the rest and enforcing their will. Policing measures will fall disproportionately on people with less power. For example, when Wall Street banks purposely sold securities they knew were worthless for literally trillions of dollars and precipitated the 2008 global recession, no one was arrested or went to jail. What they did was not even illegal. But if a street-level hustler steals $100 from a convenience store, he may do five years in prison. Similarly, while blacks make up about 12% of the overall U.S. population, they are close to 38% of the prison population. In North Carolina, over half the prison inmates are black. Our prisons are also primarily filled with people who are poor. The criminal justice system reflects the views and desires of the wealthy. Since conflict theory views conflict as caused by inequality, it predicts areas of inequality in a society will be sites of conflict, which is what we find. Inequality exists in terms of economic class, race, gender, and sexual orientation, and each of those areas is a site of significant social conflict. It is important to recognize that conflict theory does not approve of conflict. The goal is to reduce conflict by reducing inequality. For that reason, unlike functionalism, conflict theory does care about fairness. Greater fairness equals less conflict. Poverty or inequality are not functional. They are a result of exploitation and domination by those with wealth and power. As I hope is clear, functionalism and conflict theory are not compatible as analytical models since they have very different premises and reach different conclusions. Sociologists will be one or the other, not both. The same is true politically. Republicans tend to be functionalists and Democrats tend to be conflict theorists. It is why the two political parties have very different views of social problems and different solutions for how to fix those problems. Symbolic interaction, the newest model, is the third method for doing social analysis. Both functionalism and conflict theory are a form of macro-analysis looking at the big picture, viewing society from the top down. Symbolic interaction is a type of micro-analysis, looking at society from the bottom up, starting at the level of our daily interactions. Symbolic interaction begins by asking where does society, which is a vague and abstract concept, actually become real? The answer, as the name suggests, is in our daily interactions with each other. We make society real by the ways we relate to other people. We make society exist as we interact. Our interactions, in turn, are determined by what other people mean to us. People symbolize things, and what people symbolize shapes who we think they are, and who we think they are shapes how we relate to them thus the name symbolic interaction. When we see somebody, we size them up and make assumptions. This is called defining the situation. Once we have defined the situation, we act upon those assumptions. And once we act upon them, we make them real, even if our assumptions are incorrect. The Thomas Theorem states that situations defined as real will be real in their consequences. Two young men in a bar may see another man whose actions make them think he is gay. If they beat him up later that night, it won't matter if their assumptions were wrong. 
the situation defined as real has been made real in its consequences. Similarly, we will also present ourselves in particular ways. We try to shape how other people size us up and the assumptions they make about us. If we don't like how others see us, we will change our look, trying to make a better impression, or one consistent with how we want to be seen. Shakespeare wasn't kidding when he said that life is a stage and that all of us are actors. In fact, we are all really good actors. We will change our presentation and manner of relating instantly, based upon whom we think we are relating with and how we want them to think about us. You could meet four different people on a sidewalk and immediately change your presentation and interaction with each one based upon your assumptions about them and the impressions you want to leave with them. Functionalism, conflict theory, and symbolic interaction are the primary ways that sociologists analyze issues and problems in society. Sociologists tend to belong to one of these analytical schools because they have very different perspectives and reach different conclusions. That is especially true for functionalism and conflict theory. Similarly, you will probably find that one of these analytical models is more appealing to you based upon what you think about society. Societies are complex organisms. Understanding how they work is important for explaining the problems that societies encounter and for finding ways to fix those problems. Even more, since each one of us is a product of our society, understanding how societies work is essential for understanding ourselves.